In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a dash background color for our bar chart. And if you refresh here, you will see it will nicely recalculate and build on it on its own. So let's start to look how we can do this. So let's start to look how to create dash style background color in the bar chart in Chart.js. And to do this, first of all, we need to get our boiler template, which you can find on Chart.js3.com, getting started this specific link, which you can find as well in the description box. So once you're on here, scroll down and copy this boiler template. Copy all of this. If you want to understand this code, please watch this video here that explains it all. Paste this in there, cut out the title, I'm going to put a title up here. Save, refresh. All right, let's maximize the size of the chart by saying here, chart box, as a class 80%, save, refresh. So now we have this, and what we're going to do is we're going to give a dash background color. Personally, I don't recommend this because we're going to use a trick here and, well, it could, it could be nice, but it's, it's a, I would say it's not, not really re most recommended. Anyway, but the question was how to do it. Let's start to explore that. So what I'm going to do is we're going to not focus on the borders. However, I do want to highlight the borders and make it a bit more visible because we're going to work with transparent colors in the background color later on. So that's why I'm going to make this border width of three pixels. Save that refresh. We have a nice thick black border. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to remove this and we need to create now a color that is a um, gradient color. And for that, we're going to use a callback functionality. So we're going to say here, background color, remove all the brackets. And then we're going to say here, um, context, we can use that. Then and the reason I'm using context and not CTX is because I'm going to use CTX later on. So uh, we're going to put in here the function error expression. Once we did that, make sure we have a comma here. And then we're going to say here, console log, and just show you what is this context. If I save this and refresh, you can see by default, because we don't return any value of color, it will grab the border color as a default value. So if I open up this here, you can see here, we get a lot, let me just do that. All right, refresh this click this I'll just click on one and what I will do here is just to zoom in a bit all right uh, let's make that better okay, let's refresh this select one all right so we've got this now and you can see what's going on here we get all of this information here however we are still in what we call the chart object meaning we can go still one level up because this here restricts us why because we need to be basically in the chart object which is this one here that's the object here, basically the chart object is this part here. So how do we do this? Well, basically we can say here, just quite simple, dot chart. So we go one level up, and this one level up gives us access to everything. And that everything is because similar to this, and because of this, it goes back to config, and config gives access to data, and etc., etc. All of this is now, it's like we're going one level up, like a helicopter view. That's basically what we're doing here. And we have all this full access. Beautiful. And now we can start to play around with that. So what I'm going to do here is, first of all, I'm going to say here, the constant chart will be equal to context.chart. So from here on, we can do an object destructuring. So what I need is if I scroll down here, you can see here we can get the data. We can get the, um, uh, let's see here, the CTX to draw in there. And we can get here as well as the chart area. Uh, somewhere you see probably here the chart area all of this information here because all of this information will later define the uh, positioning of our coloring and if you want to understand chart area I have a video in the description box so I'm going to do here now a constant the uh, constant and we're going to say here this will be the uh, let's see here this is the object destructuring of course and the object destructuring is based on the chart because this is the chart object so what I'm going to say here I'm going to get the CTX comma, I want to get here the chart area, comma, and we need the scales. So I'm going to save this, refresh, there we are. So now we have this here and that works all fine. So what I want to do now is, and this is a real important part, we're going to say if, this if statement uh, will help us protect us from errors. And that's the reason why, because you have the chart area here, and we're going to say, if there's no chart area defined yet, in that case, we turn null. And the reason I want to do this is just basically if, 
and especially you can see the animation they usually on load on the first load or the initial load the chart is still calculating the size and everything and that takes two milliseconds or uh, it basically takes a few milliseconds and it usually loads twice or something like that and the reason why as you can see here if I do a console log you will see that the first chart area might give you a null value as you can see here undefined and uh, that's only the first two and after that it will define it because it just takes some seconds or milliseconds to load this but if we don't do this we will get a millisecond of this or we get this undefined value that will be transferred to a function and that can give us an error so that's why we have to force this say hold on we give this first null and then afterwards what I'm going to do here is return gradient let's create the function let's create the function grade get gradient and what I want to do here is adding up these parameters and these parameters are also the arguments because these are the arguments and the parameters are identical in this case all right so now we have this and this is very important because now we say all right once load this and the first two loads it will be undefined but afterwards it will give us the values if we don't have this you will get get only this one and then we get some issues so we don't want to have that so what i'm going to do now is we have this function we can grab this entire function with these basically we're going to say these are the, the arguments but these arguments will be also a parameter in here so we're going to say a function this will be our parameter now and uh, i just said this was the parameter but these are the arguments because these are the arguments and the arguments are the exact values so these are the exact values and then the parameters have the same values as the arguments all right so now we have this what i want to do here is because uh, these items gives us an access to some advanced object destructuring in chart area because we will be needing that and the reason why we need a chart area is because this here defines the size of the chart area where we can color these bars so what we're going to do here is the following we're going to say here constant and let's grab here first of all the chart area object destructuring so it's a chart area and what i want to grab is all of these we could do and the reason we're doing this is just to speed up the, the process instead of saying chart area dot top and bottom etc etc we're just saying here top bottom left right width and height and the reason i'm doing that is is like a shorthand for us so we have all of these basically you just grab them you don't need all of them but i just put them all in there as as a habit and of course you can remove them all if once you're ready so what we want to do now is constant i'm going to say a gradient bg because it's the background and that will be eventually our value for the gradient effect so what i want to do here is say here a ctx yeah, so remember the ctx is from this one here because we want to draw on the canvas and then we're going to say you create linear gradient and if you understand that we're drawing on the canvas this here is just drawing in the canvas using a canvas command that javascript recognizes so this is just canvas api and then in here we have the x value which would be basically the left position so x zero or x start that's probably the right one y start and then we have here the uh y uh sorry the x end and then we have the y end and this here is it's just the top bottom left and right so this the starting point is at the left side all right and this left here because it's the chart area say left and then we're going to say here uh, the starting point on the y which is the horizontal level is the top so we're going to say here top and here the ending point would be right and finally here bottom so we're covering the full spectrum or at least the full chart area so now we have this so what i want to do here is well let's make this very simple i'm going to say constant the c1 or color one and color one will be equal to well what kind of color can we use um let's grab this one and then i'm going to say here color one will be this but we'll say here or oh, it will be like that that's fine then I'm going to say here color number two and that will be transparent so we have a dark transparent that you could use of course red or anything you want and maybe that's even nicer just get that red color here uh, this one here 
will look a bit more colorful. Copy that, put that in here. So now we have this here. And the reason why we're doing this, because this create linear gradient is being col uh, uh, colored. And I realize I make a tiny mistake in here. Because what we want to focus on is basically on horizontal lines. We want to do horizontal lines. We're not allowed to work with the horizontal uh, values, but only on vertical values. You might say, well, isn't that the opposite? Well, yes, it is. But that's how it works. So we're going to put this on zero and zero because we don't want to move left or or like diagonal because we only want to have top and bottom. But anyway, I'm going to show you later on. You understand what I mean. So then what I'm going to do here, we have this. And then I'm going to say here the following. Let's say your gradient, b, g, dot. Add color stop. And then we're going to say we want to start at the very top, which is 0. 0%, zero which is the starting point at the top. And then what I want to do here is give it a color. And the color will be color 1. So then, let me just show you if we're going to do a gradient. And I say color number 2. If I do just this on number 1, because the 0 stands for 0%, and 1 stands for 100%, which means at the very bottom. So if we will have a gradient effect like this, if I save this, then I say here, return gradient BG, save, refresh, we get this gradient effect. Of course, this is not, and you can make it even darker by saying one here. Maybe that's even better, as you can see here. However, this is not what I want. I want it step by step. And by the way, if I would say here left, you will understand that it will get some diagonal effect. And here right, let's see. It will happen. You will see you get a completely different effect than what we wanted because we want to only focus on the horizontal, meaning that everything at the top here, and then we want to switch it to the next level of color. All right, so how do we do this? So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy this again, put it in here, and I'm going to say here, this is color one, and here color one, but the color one here will be only 10%. And then when we want to do color number two, we'll start because we want an immediate transition. So not a gradual, but an instant transition from one color to another. So what I want to say is from this point to this point, so this 10% will be color one, whatever we assigned here. And after that, jump immediately to the next color, which is the transparent color. And that transparent color that we put in here will be only 10% as well, so 0 0.2. Then what I want to do is, and then from here again, I want to do here color number one. And if I save this, refresh, you will see here now we have a first, what we could say here, a gradient effect, or sorry, a uh, dotted effect. Of course, you can make it more narrow, it's up to you. But this is basically the way to do it. It's, it's uh, with the option that we have. So what I want to do now is I'm going to just copy this. All right, so we say here, color one, this will be color two. And this will be, uh, we are going here from two, two till number three and this will be three and then all right so we have to just copy this i'm just going to do this multiple times until we have it till 100 percent or number one so we say here this should be to uh, number two and then after this will be like that so we have to make sure this color is two Four. All right, so here, and then we have one. I realize that I should have these colors properly coordinated. All right, so let's see. Do we have that properly coordinated? I guess not, my bad. Let's remove this one. So we have this here. Let's remove that as well, because we need two and two. All right, so we said four, and this will be five. And this will be five, this will be six, six, seven, seven. 8, 8, 9, 9, and finally, the last color will be number 1, 100%. So if I save this, refresh, there we are. And that's it. So that's basically it. If it's very desirable, you can see here we have the transparent, maybe we want to make it white. Let's grab this, convert this, and say here, 255, 255, and 255, or you just type in the text white, one or the other. So you can see here why though the grid lines are not visible. But of course, as you can see here, this here will have a slightly different color because it just grabs the color, whatever it sees here. However, this is the way how you can create 
your dotted lines here. We could even make this matching with the scale here. Let me do that one as well as an extra option. So how we do this? Because we have the scales here, we can do this one here. What I'm going to do here, not a constant. Let's do a constant uh, object destructuring of the scales. I'm going to say here zero, uh, sorry, this will be X and Y. So then what I want to do is I want to grab the Y here and uh, how we do that, oh, that was slightly more tricky, I realized that maybe we should make a separate video for that because it will be based on the value here and then must be calling percentage. All right, so let me just skip that one. That will be too complicated for now. And then, but this is basically the way because we're calling it in percentages. So all those differences must be calculated in percentages. That will make it just a bit more tricky. But anyway, this is basically the way to do it. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you might be curious on how to do what I try to do here, apparently I had a video, I didn't even realize it. Uh, I have a video here that you can use as well. So how to use the gradient color based on scale values in ChartJS, where, we, where we're basically doing the same thing, but then measuring based on the, on the Y value here, for example. And that's a useful one as well if you really want to know what I try to, to do there. Yes, watch this video.